Ready? Go! 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 Oi! 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 More energy! More energy! More power! Oi! 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 More energy! More energy! More power! Oi! Oi! That was mad! More passion! More passion! Let me say that footwork! 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 Give it to them! Give it to them! Give it to them! More passion! More energy! More passion! More energy! More energy! More energy! Oi! 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 Okay, I don't know what... Whatever it is, it's not right on a teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. Okay, but... Okay. This, yeah, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. Okay. Any? Sure. There's okay. no words there. To play us out. What does that mean? To play us out. It's, it's Sting is going to do... It's a video. Sting video. What is for credits? I don't know what that means to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah. Yeah. All right, go. Go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! We obviously didn't communicate clearly. We had to discuss your surrender, not mine. What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Luis Martinez, a.k.a. Big Chief Burrito, live with you on a Tuesday. Me, Hemptish, show live and direct from South California. 
North California, Europe. Central California, all over the California coast, the Burrito Lounge. Live with us today, our beautiful co-host, Miss at Sophia Carr underscore. What's up, Sophia? That's me. Hello. What's up, gente? How's everyone doing? And joining us to kick off the show today, live and direct from our beautiful palatial estate, <laughs> <laughs> our entertainment correspondent, Lizzie, a.k.a. Dizzy Ms. Lizzie from Twitch. Woo! Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good to have uh, you. Thanks for having ha me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, listen, we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to have a guest coming up later. It's a jam-packed show tonight. Make mm -hmm. sure that if you guys are dropping in, leave a like if you see us scrolling by. Like it, share the stream, leave a comment. It helps us out tremendously with the algo rhythms uh, mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. And let us know where you're watching or listening from. But we're going to jump right into our main topic for the night. Let's do the it. The entertainment world and the football world, the manosphere, <laughs> and, the lady, and, the la and the ladyverse are colliding as... A seismic shift in the, uh, I don't know, man. People are saying this is an Illuminati thing. People are saying this is a whole lot of stuff. So many conspiracy theories. But everybody's favorite mid-singer, Taylor Swift. And everybody's favorite first-round tight end, Travis Kelsey, are reportedly dating. She was seen with him at a uh, game in, in Kansas City. And then she showed up to my fucking home stadium, <laughs> MetLife, to Ooh. watch the Chiefs and the Jets. We'll get into that Ooh. later. But... Here to break down the 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 uh, series of events that le led to this seismic shake, Lizzie, take us through. This happened. When do you come aware of us? What? How are you feeling about the situation? All right. Well, let me just start with the timeline, right? Where it all began. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. on July seventh, Taylor Swift had her concert in <laughs> Kansas City at the Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, Travis Kelsey was was in attendance, and he made a friendship bracelet. Uh, which is a Swifty thing. All the girls make friendship, mm -hmm. or guys, whatever. They make friendship bracelets and trade and stuff. So after the concert, he went backstage and uh, he did say on his podcast, he did not get to meet her, but he did uh, say, can you give this to Taylor? And it had his phone number on it. So it was like a bracelet Ooh. with beats, but it had his phone number on it. He shot um, a shot. Yeah. And he said, he went at the, uh, he has a podcast with his brother and he said, uh, he talked about it and he said he shot a shot and that he messaged her, you know, they, they've been messaging and that he told her, I saw you perform in my stadium. Um, I'm inviting you to come and watch me, you know, do my thing in, in my stadium. And um, sure enough, she showed up at the Chiefs home game two weeks ago um, on Sunday and uh, she was sitting next to his mom, hugging his mom, you know, just power move. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um cheering for him wearing a kansas city uh jacket uh but she's an eagles fan because she's from philly <laughs> so it's shut up <laughs> what <laughs> she even has a song lyric where she mentions her eagles jersey so um and when she was in philly she even told them you know she's a she's a philly girl she's an eagles fan but you know uh, I think the Eagles um, tweeted something along the lines of we got our undercover girl now, you know, like, yeah, there you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how it all began. Now, okay. I guess the, there was rumors that they've been dating, talking, but until she was seen, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it like a football thing for them to get like mustaches because Aaron Rodgers did it too and a lot of them do that during the season right look at but look at him right here he's That's all swagged out he's got the matching pants he's got the camo he's got the girl here and now he's just got this little stash there yeah yeah okay, looking like a cop looking the stash right. right now all right continue continue all right so then um after the game they were seen walking out of the stadium together getting into his convertible and just driving off. Then mm -hmm. later that evening, a photo leaked of them at a restaurant that he bought out for a private party for the Chiefs that evening. And she's sitting on his, it looks like she's sitting on his lap with his hand around him. What? Uh, yeah. I see that it's on TMZ uh, released it or was it okay? One of those. Um, mm -hmm. So that confirms even more uh, the rumors that they're an item. Uh, then, of course, now I'm going to go to, yes, or not yesterday, two days ago, on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, yeah, at mm -hmm. MetLife, she shows up again. But this time, she shows up with an entourage. She shows up with Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, uh, Hugh Jackman. 
Um, and Sophie Turner is there too, one of her dancers. Yes! Yeah. Wait, Sophie Turner, Joe Jonas's yeah. ex-wife. Power, Power move. I love that. There she's right there, yeah. <laughs> That's Brady Mahomes down there. Oh, sad, eating her sad chicken tender. She's eating her mozzarella <laughs> sticks, I think. It was. Her sad chicken tender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um yeah so she shows up at the jets game uh on sunday night and um mm -hmm. cheering you know um uh, and that's the facts right that's the timeline that's the timeline mm -hmm. but i that's have my theories so. what are your theories Ooh. okay let me give you like what my yeah. perspective is okay because the the thing that pisses off sports fans obviously is that like it was a the Jets and the Chiefs. The Jets are having a shitty season, so people pretty much expected the Chiefs to like destroy them. And so NBC was basically ready to like cut to Taylor Swift every two seconds. But they the game were. was sort of exciting. <laughs> Imagine how much they would have been cutting to her if it would have been like a blowout. You know yeah. what I mean? Every touchdown. There's, they they had like song lyrics that they were mixing in. It was like a whole fucking shebang bang. Dang. So it's interesting from a from a from a sports perspective that this chick is dating one of the best players in the game. But it's also very annoying. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a look. I'm a Swifty and I'm a football. You know, you're a football fan. Oh, I was gonna say you're. And both, even both I don't want to see her. Every time Kelsey catches the ball, every time he there, there's a touchdown, I don't want. I don't care for her reaction. And I, yeah. you know, they usually show spouses or if there's famous people in the in the house, they'll they'll show a clip. But and it's fun to see them, but they really are going mm -hmm. overboard, and it's it is getting annoying. I agree. All right, yeah. so what are your theories on, on how this is happening or why this All right. is happening? So I'm going to say my theory first, and then I'm going to say a few theories that I've been reading on blind items and gossip pages. Okay. So not only was, you know, uh, Ryan Reynolds there, and Hugh Jackman, recently divorced Hugh Jackman. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, he, he filed for oh. divorce like two weeks ago or this last week. I know, I, 20 here. plus, yeah, yeah, 20 plus marriage. Um, yeah, wow. Director of Deadpool 3, Sean Levy, was also in attendance there. So, mm. Sophie Turner is Jay Green, Jean Gray, what's her name? Jean Gray Jean and X Men. Jean Jean Gray. Gray. Yeah. yeah, so I know everything's on strike right now, but my theory is that there's going to be a cameo or taylor swift at least will play a, either a cameo or a character in deadpool 3 and um that's why they hmm. were all there because they're probably all hanging out in new york anyway um hmm. showed up together to the game afterwards they left together she didn't leave with uh travis this time because on away games the football players have to stay with their team mm -hmm. but they have their own protocol so after that night they also all went out together um I think that they're working on a Deadpool 3. After, you know, they were talking about it. And I think Travis Kelsey might also make a cameo in mm. that movie. Huh. That's my Why? Theory. Does he act? I don't even know. Cameos. They have okay. a lot of sports people in movies all the time, especially Ryan Reynolds, you know, in his movies. Um, yeah. That's my theory. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Guys trying to watch the Chiefs game, their Swifty girlfriend explaining the significance of Travis Kelsey doing the arch remove. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's I don't even know what that is either. I think it's a celebration, maybe. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. He was yeah. like this or something. So that's uh my theory is that you know, maybe and the biggest theory of all right now is that it's all PR, right? And part of mm -hmm. me feels like it is, um, because well, look at how many women tuned in to watch the game last night uh i bet the radio travis really kelsey good. jersey sales are up 400 percent. yeah 400 percent. that's insane. exactly the, the stadium sold out and but the my, tickets were the most expensive every, every, but he's benefiting every, every more than her well the thing is that i don't right? i think that they started talking mm -hmm. and now that it got blown out of proportion they're just riding the wave and nfl is like let me let me so something that might have started pr doesn't mean that they're not dating or together, right. but dating just means that they went to the same place and got photographed together in some instances, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Right. So right. a lot. I I really. She's a very private person in every relationship, especially her last couple of ones. She's been completely off radar, rare, rare sightings. So it's really weird as a Swifty to see her just out crowd, like, like yeah. going to a football game. I was like, whoa, Taylor, like you don't you never write 
in a car that's not bulletproof and now you're in a mm-hmm. in a convertible riding off with travis kelsey that's right. wild mm-hmm. um i am enjoying it because you know you have your faves and if they're so hidden you never see them so you know um yeah. it's nice but also it's weird because you know it's like i don't know i feel like there's a lot of um things that the media does that we Absolutely. think it's like it's yeah yeah so it, it's and when it's so overexposed like that it feels off-putting like it's, it doesn't feel something's wrong something's hiding here um mm-hmm. i saw on blind items which is a uh, gossip pages and i follow a lot of pages on twitter and tiktok uh there's a rumor that uh taylor and kelsey met because they were filming a super bowl commercial this summer Ooh. so that's how it started Ooh. Now we'll find out in February, right? <laughs> like we'll find we'll, out. We'll find out, and maybe that's what ha- that's what it all is. And because of yeah. all this hype, imagine seeing on Super Bowl commercial with both of them. You know, oh, that is good PR. But right. I have a question because as someone who's not at all a football fan, I know nothing. Right? Um, who, who is he? Is he like a, well, a super? We'll get- he's the best tight end player? right now. Yeah, really? Yeah. A, okay. Okay. I got some memes that we can share later when we can jump into a little bit. Mm-hmm. But basically, he's. He's a top, he's the number one player at his position over the last mm-hmm. five years. Yeah. He's probably one of the oh. best tight ends of all time, like top five tight end of all time. Oh, so sorry. he's like a okay. top, he's like a top 25 overall player in the NFL. Got so it. there's a whole meme of women triggering their husbands by saying that, uh, by recording them telling their husbands, like, oh, isn't it cool that this guy, Travis Kelsey, is going to have a career now? You know, he's going to, he's finally going to make some money. <laughs> well, that's that's like, like yeah, bring, I, bringing them to the spotlight. <laughs> Helping him and out, a couple yeah, of other that. things. Um, Loki, that's a, what I thought. Uh, yeah. I was like, well, who we is wanted, he? Wow, how he's lucky. in every other commercial right now. I don't know if you like. If you yeah, he's doing like vaccination commercials. He's doing commercial. everything. He's doing no everything. Idea. He's, he's popping. Yeah. Listen, one of the things I just wanted to bring up really quickly because um, yeah, we have our guests that are coming in. But the other side of this and the other kind of part of it is his dating history because mm-hmm. you know essentially he he was a he was be he was considered a light skinned like black guy almost because he was dating mostly exclusively black women he went on a game show on a dating show like catching kelsey and he ultimately chose a black woman as uh and then they dated for eight months she did a video recently about how he like she betrayed him he cheated on him he dated another girl Mm -hmm. uh that dated him for a long time and she thought that he was going to eventually marry her and he dropped her um so there's this whole thing happening on twitter and stuff like that where it was like Almost like black people were claiming him, and and then they were like, then it was like, oh, they relax. He's he's a, he's a white dude. Like he went from like having all this swag to now looking like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, is, this is the only one I'm saying. Listen, man, yeah. I'm a I'm a man, so you know I'll I'll have my misogynistic moment, but like he was dating her. You know, for a while she went with him to the Super Bowl. She he was dating yeah. her, and now he's dating her. Let's be honest. He's dating her for the clout. They don't. They both don't. But they both need benefit. It, yeah. But it is benefiting the NFL as a whole. It's yeah. benefiting him. Yeah. If more. you want that type of attention, they're gonna have to pay him a lot more. I he feel has like. a he has a podcast with his brother, and it was popular. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like a little over because he's got the podcast with his mother. His mom has a podcast. His mom's yeah, going from Philadelphia to Kansas City. He's like super yeah. overexposed. Like he has podcast yeah. commercials. Yeah, he's, he's everywhere. He's on social media. Campbell's like soup. crazy. <laughs> he's doing Campbell's soup and and vaccinations. The oh, Pfizer, doing, right? Yeah. Pfizer. He's doing a bunch of stuff. Well, anyway, we wanted to touch yeah. base with our with our entertainment correspondent, yeah. Lizzie and well, resident Swifty. When Deadpool three comes out, think of me. Ooh, <laughs> and when and, and if the Super Bowl commercial's real, uh, then remember. You'll be like, and oh, when, <laughs> when the inevitable breakup happens and the heartbreak in the songs, I'll let you know what we'll, songs are about. You gotta come on, <laughs> yes, please. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, then we'll then they'll they'll sift through the 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 coded <laughs> lyrics. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I will see. That. I love it. All well, right, thank Lizzie, you for thanks for joining me. us. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This later. was way too oh. quick, but yeah, if oh, you yeah. can join in later. Yeah, we, I, I still have a All bunch right. of memes, and I have those videos of the wives uh, triggering their husbands. Um, so I love that. Try we'll to check. find the Brittany Mahomes. Send to, I'll send it to you actually on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, send it Perfect. to me and I'll, okay. I'll pull it I'll up find as well. A funny one. You All mean right, X. I'll see you guys Thank later. You, Brittany. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. All right, that was our Taylor entertainment Swift. correspondent. What are we gonna? What 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 would you call that that couple? Would it be like 
Swelsey uh, Swelsey. Swelsey. Uh, Kel Kelift? No. Kelsift. 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 Swelsey. Swelsey. Yes. Yeah. All right. I feel like how long do you give them? How long do you give them? Do we have to? Let me see. I give them well season ends in January. So I think maybe a quiet February, March breakup. Beautiful. That's what I thought right. too. I was right. like, as soon as the season's over, a few months after. All right. Well, moving right along, we do have um we do have um uh, uh our Latinx spotlight to go to today. Yeah, um, we're just so boom, boom, boom today. Boom, boom, boom. This is a big deal. So earlier, uh not so earlier I had um during Comic Con. Yeah. I had met some people from um a website, uh, not a website, from um a fan base, a fan base mm -hmm. press. And um there was a and I was sort of looking for comic books and 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 other independent art that was, you know, for Latinos by Latinos, Latino themed stories, et cetera, et cetera. And I've been talking to so big ups to um Barbara Dillon, who I met at Comic Con. We spoke a little bit and she's like, well, I can connect you some some people that I'm in touch with. She said, there's these uh, there's these people that made this comic book called Nuclear Power, this book that's basically a sort of I would I would describe it as like a sort of like a man from High Castle. That's like an alternate history type deal mm -hmm. about a real event dealing with like the Cold War, um, you know, Cuban Missile Crisis type deal, that era. And it was inspired by, um, you know, their families and having to live through that period so we said let's have them on let's talk a little bit about the book so joining us tonight um let me make sure i got their names right we have desiree <laughs> proctor right and erica harrell yeah hello. 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 Oh, oh i love how spooky your background is Sophia. thank you it's thank great. you so much it is october i was like i need to spook it up happy halloween <laughs> happy, happy halloween. almost halloween <laughs> yes. thank you so much for having us thank you for that intro thank you for yeah. being on did i did i sort of get it right though in terms of like describing the book a little bit how would you describe it yourselves yeah, we definitely describe it as an alt history take on the Cuban Missile Crisis set in uh, modern day. Like, what would the U.S. look like if the USSR and the United States had, like, nuked each other back in the 1960s in those, like, 13-day period? Um, yeah, very uplifting story. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, have you always been, like, a history buff? Or, like, how did you get to that topic specifically? Um, so both of us, actually, I noticed that, um, after us, you guys are talking about Florida and both of us are from Florida. Um, Desiree was more of a military brat, so she lived all over, but, um, ultimately her grandparents and great grandparents had ties to Key West. And then my mom, um, was from Cuba and, you know, came over in the like early sixties, like right around the time of like the Cuban missile crisis. And there was kind of a, a trickle down effect, even though I was born like generations later, there was still sort of this like negative connotation to like towards Cubans in Florida. And, you know, people still kind of were very wary of, especially like communism after like the cold war and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, when Desiree and I kind of were coming together as writing partners, it happened to be like a topic in history that not a lot of people knew about, not a lot of people had really explored. And it was something we were like, Oh, this actually affected both of our families in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Like my mom was living in the living in Florida at the time as a kid when the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, and her whole family was just like, "We can't tell people we're Cuban. We gotta like like we're afraid for our life." Um, so that's kind of like so that was kind of a big theme in the story for us was you know like acceptance, um, overcoming differences. Um, and so that was like a big inspiration. And, you know, like Erica said, not a lot of people really remember that time period unless you were like alive back then. Yeah. When you'd say, you know, having to sort of uh, hide, um, your ethnicity, do you think it ever got to the point where it was, you know, came close to like Japanese in California during the, the second world war or did it never, or could it have reached that sort of level? You think uh, if, if there would, if that sort of uh, involvement would have continued? Well, I hope not. I mean, I do. I mean, even when we were living, you know, Erica, you have that story of like, there was that, that sign at that yeah. Lake Tampa. 
Yeah, there used to be a very famous sign in this like small lake where people used to go swimming in that said like no dogs or Cubans allowed. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like forcible removal like they did, you know, with Japanese American people into, you know, camps and internment camps. camps. It was, you know, I think there was just more, um, luckily the bombs didn't go off and there wasn't this like major crisis with Cuba at that time. So I think that like once that cooled down, you know, tensions cooled a bit in Florida at that time and kind of, you know, um, eased up a little bit. And also like Florida as a place just happens to be like such a melting pot of Mm -hmm. not just Cubans, but there's Puerto Ricans, there's Dominicans, there's a lot of Haitians. That's just like a place where a lot of, you know, um, folks from the Caribbean ended up. And so I think that that also kind of like helped ease tensions in a way where it's just like, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of Latinos there. There's a lot of, you know, different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was my favorite. That was definitely my favorite part of being in Florida was just seeing the mel- melting pot and so many different accents. Because you don't get that here in California. It's uh, all Mexicans. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it was very beautiful. Do you both still live in uh, Florida? or No, we're both um, in Los Angeles. And uh, oh, we went to college in Orlando and then uh, moved out to L.A., um, to pursue film and TV. And, uh, you know, speaking of like lots of Mexican, lots of Mexican stories out here, it's like, we're now um, co-producers and writers on Lopez versus Lopez for NBC, which is George Lopez's show. So, you know, we definitely get to play in that world, which is really fun. That's awesome. Wow. So did you guys meet, you guys met on the show or did you guys meet uh, previously? We met years ago. Yeah, we, we met going through, going to the same college and then just being like, moving out here and being nerds and going to comic-con <laughs> <laughs> nice. as, oh, yeah. as fans uh so you know comics was something that we'd always wanted to get into and we just kind of didn't know how to do it we were writing tv and we were writing like video games and then dc comics uh ended up having this like comics writing program and you had to submit a piece of published work and so since video games are published we submitted one of our video games and that's how we got into the program and then like scott snyder like taught us how to write comic books um yeah so and that's how we met our artist lin yoshii who did all the coloring lettering everything for the book She's oh like a wonder kid. It's amazing. Yes. Spoiler, yes. Al- spoiler alert. <laughs> Show a little bit of the art that we got here, a little preview of it. Yeah. She was it's kind kinda... of influenced by like a manga style and she's a yeah. Japanese American, um, a Japanese Hawaiian artist. And uh, she like, it, the book is so beautiful. Like the way she kind of just like did things in like the simplistic way, but also she changes mm-hmm. colors as the issues go on and, it just like it looks phenomenal and she did the dc comics artist program like desiree said and we were invited to tour the dc offices because a lot of the classes were actually on zoom and Mm -hmm. um we went in and we saw her drawing of wonder woman and we were like oh my gosh her like her she's got to be the one that like if we can work on anything that we you know publish on our own it should be her and so we were very very grateful to get her Mm-hmm. This this looks awesome. like a scene from a few good men. You know, it's a very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle it. I'm sorry. Um that, that's well, pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um so I mean when you when you decide to jump into the comic book world, you're you know, you're you're writing TV for video games, etc. What is um I always, what is the, what is, what is, what is the thing you have to be careful of to not, for example, I mean, you know, cause the, the comic book world is so vast and, you know, so many different stories, so many similar stories have been told. How do you sort of take care to not be derivative to sort of make sure that you're telling the story in your own words? What, what did you guys, is it just, this is what we like, this is what we do. Or did you sit down and say, these are just steps we have to take to sort of avoid these pitfalls and, and to sort of, you know, feel clean about the product that we're putting out there. Yeah. I mean, we, um, I think for us, we tell stories that are, there's always some personal angle. And so I feel like that is kind of what makes whatever story we're telling unique. But I also think having uh, the collaboration of Lynn and Barbara and Bryant, who are publishers over at Fanbase Press was very helpful. I mean, since we're dealing with in the comic book, a lot of people with um, 
disfigurements and some disabilities, they, Barbara and Bryant, like, brought in um, somebody to make sure that we were, it's like, like, sensitivity consultants uh-huh. that, yeah. sort of, you know, helped, you know, make sure that we weren't um, stepping on anyone's toes, like, in, mm-hmm. in terms of characterization of people or, you know, and, and sometimes us as a writing team, it's really nice to also just have, like, that, as, that partnership and collaborate in that way. Yeah. That's and if we ever got too crazy, I mean, there was one point where Lynn was like, this is too violent. I'm not drawing this. <laughs> and so what? we were like, oh, well, if Lynn refuses to draw it, we'll rewrite it. So <laughs> wait, I want to know now what was it? <laughs> now I want to know so badly. <laughs> there was a scene where um, there's an explosion that took place and there was going to be like a, a lot of children killed. And she oh. was like, I don't want to participate in drawing that and we were like that's absolutely Fair. legitimate i mean mm-hmm. you have to like research that you'd have to live with that you'd have to like you know it, it takes mm-hmm. you know for us when you're writing a comic like we can knock that out in a few weeks and you know kind of carefully go through it when an artist you know comes in they are spending hours and hours just maybe on one panel and so yeah. you have to like really also think about that um and Desiree and I were able to do the um, Marvel Voices uh, Communidades, which was like their Latinx anthology. And so we were actually like, in that case, we were assigned a character that they had that Marvel hadn't really used a lot of. And she was a Latina from Florida. Um, and we were then were able to kind of expand on where she was within the timeline, but like work a little bit differently, like in that case versus doing our own comic. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah. Absolutely. That's as somebody who's, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a, I'm a writer, PWGA, and a filmmaker. I said, Sophia's an actress and a writer as well. And sometimes I, I have, I, I have an idea for something, and, and I think to myself, you know, this might work as a comic book. You know, um, do you feel that um, this, I guess, is more like shop talk? But do you feel that 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 it's okay to sort of develop it in that manner? visually and that eventually will help you whether it turns into a film or a comic book or anything like that does do you think that helps flesh it flesh out the story or is a visually appealing way to sell a project yeah i mean if you have an idea that you want to turn into a comic i say go for it because it's at least with like the comic book space for us it was a way for us to express ourselves without like really, I mean, we did get some feedback, like you said, from Barbara and Bryant and Lynn, but for the most part, it was like, this is just our voice, um, you know, not getting like network notes or studio notes or getting something assigned to you. So if there's something you're really passionate about, like, I feel like there's nothing better than having like a physical thing in your hand that you can Mm -hmm. show people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it became, I mean, not just like we were like, oh, we're guaranteed to get work or something by doing this book, but it is something where if we take a meeting or if we go and, you know, have just like what, you know, in the television or film side of things called like a general, we can either pre-send them this comic as a PDF or we can do a follow-up and be like, hey, by the way, we mailed you a book, you know, and it's like Mm -hmm. a really nice, like physical thing that you can have in your hand and, um, a lot of people are like, oh, whoa, like you did this, you know what I mean? And it kind of sets us apart in a way in, you know, the television and and film space too, because Hollywood is always always about like, what's exotic, you know? And it's, Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though it's like the Lopez versus Lopez is a like very traditional family sitcom, you know, I think that our coworkers, when they find out that we write comics are like, oh my gosh, like that's so cool. And we're like, It literally pays nothing, but you, it is a passion <laughs> to do. Passion project, yeah, yeah. You have to. Do you do you find yourself dropping some like uh, Easter eggs of comic books, like nerdy things, in in your scripts uh, for Ropas versus Lopez, and have you done that in the past? <laughs> well, uh, I will say in some of our TV shows, we've done at least um, like what three episodes that center around like Comic Con. We did a yeah. bird convention Ooh. and then two Comic Con episodes. And you know, in Thirteen Reasons Why, that comic book in season yeah. two that the kids reading is written by us. Technically, it's fake, but it's, it's fake. By us. <laughs> wow, so that's a good Easter egg. I <laughs> love it. Oh my gosh! Now, just just another one more shop time, and we'll get into a little bit of the show. But in terms of like the logistics of the idea, because I mean, as a writer, you think of the idea and then you. You spit out, you spit out, you know, the vomit draft or what have you. And then you, then you go, right. You, you know, right. Drunk, edit sober. 
type deal. Uh, <laughs> But, Tell us um, more about your process, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're learning a lot about no. you. <laughs> My question is, because um, you have it, you have it as a concept, right? You have the right. Do you have to? Um, do you have to trim? And then, if you decide that, well, we also want to sort of bring this back so that it, it has the possibility to be created in, in as a as a real show. Um, do you sort of save that in the in the back, or do you do you trim just for the for the panels? Or what's that editing process like for deciding what gets what gets on the page's words versus what you want the the, the artist to show in in visuals? Well, that's really interesting because um, you know Desiree and I would kind of have the script sort of in a Google Doc that we could you know both edit at the same time, and we would kind of give suggestions like, oh, this we would like this to be a splash page, like filling the whole thing with one image, or we want you know six panels. And we kind of did that. We sort of laid it all out. And then Lynn kind of would be like, okay, let me go through it. And she would start kind of pulling that apart and drawing. And then she would show us her layouts. And we're like, oh, we can delete a lot of those words. Like you got a lot of that emotion. You got a lot of that character. You got a lot of just like that action through her art. And we were like, great. Like we can take stuff and edit things out and pull things out because you don't want to like, say it and show it yeah. um you know it's like one of the great rules and like that's what a really good comic artist can do is just like kind of take your thing and and, and enhance it in a way so it felt like it was like we edited each other over and over again on a google page but then when you see it in a layout you're like oh take yeah. out some more make it as concise and clear as possible there was a few times where lynn was like guys stop cutting words i need words here <laughs> We're like, but Get your pictures are so away. beautiful. Yeah, we your pictures. It's just, you know, it's a silent movie, but in comic book form. It's, <laughs> it over to that. Uh, okay, right. Well, is there, you know, because I, I started uh, reading through like the first episode and, you know, kind of trying to get an idea of like the style and stuff. Stylistically, like you said, it's very clean. It's has a very classic feel, like old school, like comics and stuff like that. But it's a very modern sort of aesthetic and, and storytelling, you know. Um, what, in terms of like your passions, like how, how much, like, like how much time did you dedicate, were you able to dedicate more time to it? Like to, to keep writing like during the strike right now or, or, or how, how much like is, or do you just put it out there and like, it's there, we have one now, let's try the next thing. Or, or how deep are you into this story? I mean, we, for us, it was like, we had to leave so much on the table we had so many different ideas and storylines that we um you know had to just cut out um that we were really passionate about and then we've also thought like well if this is what is happening in the united states you know what mm -hmm. happened in europe what happened in russia what happened yeah. in africa what happened in south america uh what do those like areas of the world look like so it's been something we've been considering instead of you know continuing the story of like Reed and Iris, um, maybe just going to another part of the world mm -hmm. and seeing what happened there. Because what we're mo what we're most interested in is like because we looked at all the all the maps. We did so much research of what would have been nuked, and basically both coasts of the U.S. are gone. Europe's gone. Man Ooh. what was called Manchuria back then was gone. So is Russia. So then do, does like South America become the world power? Yeah, or like sort of like mm -hmm. South America and Africa would be sort of like the first world nations within right. us uh, who have very limited contact with what we now think is like America. And it's like, are they now in like an arms race with each other um, mm -hmm. and sort of like history repeating itself in like a bad way. But we yeah. felt like it could go on and on and on, but we were like, we're going to do, you know, this, these issues and kind of like tell this story and sort of like finish it and then, you know, see how people like it and how it sells and, mm -hmm. um, and then either, you know, start a new project or, you know, stay Get busy and film and TV yeah. and doing that. Do well, I, I don't have enough color in my printer to print this out, so I would like <laughs> a physical copy at some point uh, when, when, they, when, they be, when they become available. Um, so this is sort of based on like mutually assured destruction, right? Whereas like, you know, but but mm -hmm. it actually happens like the, the whole reason you're not supposed to be scared about the bomb, be scared about the bomb, right? Mm -hmm. um, and did you guys... Um, 
obviously you have your 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 family's history and how they were affected by it to give you sort of like the real sense of how they affected your people but did you did you dive into or revisit stuff like um you know like the i, I mean the biggest movie that i can think of is the kevin costner movie right 13 days with the uh, about the Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff like that. Did you guys kind of dive deep into some of the films and books about that era? Yeah, we read um, Robert Kennedy's has a book called 13 Days, which I think is what that movie is based on. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. so we read his book um, and we we read a lot of books and just did a lot of research. Like that whole, if you've read the first issue and the pages that you were showing, um, that was actually a real incident that occurred on the USS Randolph. Like that is an actual... Um, ship that came very close to um, being nuked by a Soviet submarine. And it was like one person on that. The Russian sub, right? That was like, no, we can't do it. Yeah. 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 And so we are kind of like, when we learned about that incident, we're like, well, what if that one guy hadn't been there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he was in. He was in the bathroom real quick. And- yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> the world would be so different. But see, this is why it's fascinating the world building that you're creating. Like, yeah, I hope it has an amazing reception because I kind of want to see it grow. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, um, the the way I came across this was, you know, going through artist alleys and small press and stuff like that and and talking to people. And basically, you know, we're me and this show. So we, we're looking for at Comic-Con, we're looking for Latino creatives and Latino stories. And they're like, well, look, we got this and we got this and I can put you together with this team. And they're Cuban and Florida in the 60s and they have this whole story and I was like say less we got it yes, yes. we got yes. you we'll get you on we definitely would love to talk to to, to, to people that um, have different interesting now um, do you feel that um, this air this you know because it didn't happen obviously the story they tell them didn't happen but that the time period obviously was very turbulent for Cuban people you know Bay of Pigs invasion all these things happening mm-hmm. um do you think that that is sort of one of the key sort of milestones? Because when we talk about Latino culture, sometimes Cuban Americans are sort of brought up as some as as part of the Latino monolith that sort of lean more conservative, lean more to this side and that. Do you think that that's kind of where all this kind of started from? Obviously, you know. Oh yes, yes. Um, you know, I think Castro coming to power and you know, a lot of people because of that losing contact with their family back in Cuba. um, There's a lot of like resentment and hurt and just like hurt there. Trauma. Yeah. You know, and a lot of um, the idea of everything was taken from me there. And this is the place in the U S is where, nobody can take that from me and Mm -hmm. I better make sure that they don't. So that's why they leaned more into a lot of the like Republican conservative things, which was like originally their party used to be about having smaller, big government, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so it was like, you know, the federal government having less of an impact. And I think that was like a complete trauma response, you know, Mm -hmm. from what they had, at least in my family, you know, like what they had been through to be just kind of like, no, like Ed, the government has to stay out. And also just like, in some ways, sort of like um, a healthy distrust of the government is good. You know what I mean? Where you're just kind of like, yeah, what are, what are they actually up to? What are the things that they're like not telling us? But then of course now it's like that the party, the Republican party has sort of like twisted itself into like an unrecognizable monstrous right. form. Yeah. Well, I feel like they just, <laughs> they just, they, they want to, they want to scare the Latinos in, in, in Florida. They just say socialism. And yeah. then they, they yes. just, they just, they just get that, that trauma response and they're like, Oh, you're right. Yes, we must, yeah. you know, we must not never again, you know, sort of thing. And, so I, I think it's, right. it's weird that it's still affecting generations later. Um, right. And it's sort of like the concept of like bucket crabbing too, in a way where it's sort of just like, well, we made it here, but everyone else out. You well, know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah we, we always talk about that, you know, like, hey, I got here. We can go ahead and close, close the door. Behind close the door. Yeah. 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 You're, you're letting in the riffraff now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And I mean, I think even within Cubans that came prior to the Mariel boat crisis, and after the Maribel crisis, the own like a lot of Cubans on their own were just like, well, they shouldn't be here. 
like mm-hmm. you know like we we came legitimately like we came on planes right <laughs> and it's like what <laughs> like yeah. you're they're still fleeing the very oppressive government they're like no they're criminals it's like so oh god guys yeah. it's like the argentinians that say we came on boats you guys came from the jungle you know uh, like, right relax, right? Like, like, look the one thing that makes me sad about this is that um you know scarface doesn't happen in this universe because of this <laughs> <laughs> so that's true. I mean, that's, travesty so, so that's yeah. you know other, other than that i'm 100 percent on board with this. but then therefore al pacino wasn't cast <laughs> al pacino wasn't True. cast yeah. so, so you get, you get yeah. some you get that um <laughs> uh can uh so listen the it's um where can people find out more about the book and uh i'll make sure that we have all the links and stuff on it nuclear power is the name of the story uh, but where can the people find mm-hmm. it uh, nuclearpowercomic.com uh, that will take you to where you can buy all of the issues. Um, it's on Fanbase Press um, is our indie publisher. Uh, they are really incredible. They've been nominated for a few Eisner Awards. They have like impeccable taste, not just because they have our book, but they have um, some really wonderful books. One is called Quince. Um, We're gonna have them on soon. Yes, we which are lovely. Yeah. They're lovely people and it's a lovely book. Um, and we're always like when we go and like sell at cons or, you know, at events, we're always like pushing Quince um, as another like Latino created property and, you know, a story that we also like really love. So I would check out all of the books that they have because they do a really great job. And Barbara and Brian are the nicest people in comics and the most like open, wonderful people to discussing, you know, like what stories they're interested in publishing and Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had nothing but great experiences talking with them, meeting them right away. They gave me their card. They're like, absolutely, we'll hook you up with some people. Um, we're definitely going to talk to the team from Keense, but we really do want to thank you guys for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thank you if so I much for get, being here. If I could just ask you a couple of other questions really quick before we let you guys go. Okay. Um, you know, WGA strike ended a couple of days ago. Um, are you guys ecstatic, happy about the deal? How, how has that affected you guys recently? Well, we're still going out and supporting SAG. Um, yes, still on the pack- picket lines, you know, got to have a union solidarity. But, yes. you know, I think we're both, I think we're just happy that it's, you know, winding down and people yes. are able to get back to work. Um, and not just writers, but crew. Crew. Yeah. Um, Even like the that. restaurants that have been suffering, other small businesses that like rely on the industry. Right. It's a really big deal. And, you know, in terms of, you know, it was like, People are always like, well, yeah, but what are you fighting for? Is this really going to be a gain? And I'll say that you know, Desiree and I are writing team. Um, and in the WGA, that means that like we are two for one. So like literally when a studio hires us, they only have to pay us one paycheck and we split it. And oh, okay. prior to this strike, we had to split our pension and our health care payments. So Whoa. when we started on a show, um, even though it was 22 episodes long and almost a year's worth of work, we didn't qualify for health insurance for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm because they made us you know it make enough as individuals but we were splitting everything so they have changed that in this negotiation it's a big deal for writing teams and now we get full contributions for a pension and full contributions for our health and you know i will say that that's a that's a really huge deal like for yeah. us and you know we teamed up because you know we we love the same genres we love you know like collaborating together we make we are stronger together than we are apart like all unions and um mm-hmm. we do feel like you know that was definitely like a big gain and it's also like you know coming in and like being able to be a two for one helped us sort of get some jobs and um mm-hmm. now we feel like we are you know equally getting compensated at the table oh that's amazing yeah. absolutely and we have to stay strong with solidarity for the SAG union and recently uh, I think video game or animation also went on uh, authorized a strike at video least. games SAG for video games yeah yeah, oh, yeah. um yeah and, and 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 absolutely you know because we we know hundreds of actors here in San Diego and the fact that they were trying to get people to show up on set one day as an extra be scanned in perpetuity mm-hmm. uh-uh. is it's just it's just plain evil yeah. You know, that, yeah. Not, not even in an alternate reality where the bomb happened, do I think that people would be doing that kind of, that kind yeah, of bullshit no. to actors? Um, mm-hmm. So, again, uh, Erica, Desiree, thank you very much for, for coming on the show. Uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to us. We wish you the best of luck. We'll be watching uh, Lopez and Lopez versus Lopez. Yes. And, and uh, making sure. And, you know, if you need a, a cute podcast, uh, you know, 
episode there and you need a, a couple of actors, you know, we, <laughs> okay. right here. We, we know where to find her. We're 90 minutes south. We can be there. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for thank coming Thank you so on. much. Have, have a great night. night. Have a great you night. Guys have a good night. Yes. Bye. Thank you for coming on. Oh, man. Lovely. Oh, my gosh. So awesome. that's so cool yeah oh man yeah i was wondering if you were gonna ask them about the writer strike i was like oh that needs to be the last question i just want to know what their experience has been like um man milestones am i right yeah it's just happening it's just happening all right lizzie's back oh jesus i was like why why the long pause yeah you just bring <laughs> oh, me back no. up <laughs> Hi. today's episode is wild it's like boop 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 hello boop, welcome boop, back i'm back I, I did take more notes and did a little more research Ooh. just for right now. Right, and we have so a PowerPoint. We can now. we can slice this all together then and, yeah. and and just have a bunch of uh Swifty clips. What a hard uh, shift. Like literally we went from Swifty to Latino comic books, that, alternate that universe. Listening. Yeah. WGA <laughs> strikes and now back to Swifties. Hi. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So what else? What else do you got? What do you, do you have for us? Well, uh, I guess something we didn't dive we deep. Which so I was gonna ask you, Lou, is um, do you think the NFL's milking it, like, hmm. like yes. in the sense that okay, so this is a theory that everybody was talking about uh, Sunday night was that the game was rigged, right? Because how right. could Taylor's like how could Taylor Swift see Kelsey lose she, right. in her presence? Like, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Since you're a big Jets fan. Listen, I'm a Jets fan, and it was a very weird game because Mahomes was Mahomes was throwing up some interceptions that didn't look like him. Um, Did you see the so, meme I sent you on, on Twitter? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll pull it up right now. Check. Um, about that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. There was definitely uh, some funny stuff happening during the game. I will say that, um, and I do think that I do think that um, that it is very interesting that. Uh, is that cons oh, cons go oh yeah there's the concerned. caption the caption is on the over here yeah what does you have to keep throwing to the other man and not travis <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's some what you were saying <laughs> right um listen on sunday night football every time they went to commercial they would sort of shoehorn in a travis i mean a travis uh a taylor swift lyric at the end of the game, they're like, you know, it's time to go. They, they, everything was a Taylor Swift lyric. Mm -hmm. Like, so absolutely 100% the NFL was, like, steering into the curb. Kelsey's jerseys went up went up 400%. Um, the one thing I'll say is that every NFL game is a sellout, so that's not really a thing. Maybe on the <laughs> resale market, tickets, tickets were going for more or something like that. I get it. Ratings are going up, so... I mean, I don't know. The NFL had that whole Enya thing for Latino Heritage Month last month. I just think oh, it was yeah. very funny. Oh, yeah. um, they did it again? No, they didn't do it. They didn't do it this year. They didn't do it this year. La Enya. Um, so I definitely think that the NFL was definitely steering into it and just basically just like, hey, listen, you know, we got we got one. We let's let's just milk this for all it is. I, I again, Kelsey beard dates black girls swagged out all of a sudden and then i saw the memes where it was like it's good to be a white man again and it's what like I mean, like he did the miley cyrus fighting like 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 twist like hey i'm back now now you yeah. know i was a crow <laughs> but literally on black twitter they were like basically accusing them of you know basically like they were like black women were mad at him for dating a white girl because mm -hmm. he had been dating mostly black women for this long and it was the a very very weird conversation where people are like dude this guy's always been white and then you have this sort of side conversation about you know he dated several different black women for x amount of time he would try to get them to pay like equally in the relationship i guess like not help them with money or something like that like making you know like there was a whole thing about like he won't pay for his girlfriends this that and this cheated on them Oh yeah, that, then, that's what I was gonna talk about. Hmm. The, the yeah, girlfriend. so yeah, go ahead and expand on that. Yeah, the there was a I don't know her name, but the his last girlfriend, the one who won the reality show, he was on the game show. Uh, she mm -hmm. went on Inside Edition even to right. talk about how he's a cheater, how he cheated after like eight six months or eight months he that he cheated on her. So yeah, uh, um, Taylor. Ashcroft. I didn't watch the full interview, but I saw clips and yeah. Um, 
I mean, are we surprised though? He's a she said she player. just wanted to warn Taylor because she seems like a nice. Oh girl. yeah, and then she's she said a girl's he, girl. But she did throw a. Uh, he was my first, yeah. which was weird. <laughs> she did say that. I know my right? first. She like was, Virginia. No, like, no, like I had him first. No. Like oh, oh, oh like, he was mine. Oh yeah, so she was first. like, I'm a, you know, she's like, I'm gonna warn her. He's a cheater. But she did throw in in the interview that well, he was mine first. Like. By the way, you know, like by saying that her intentions come into question, then you exactly. can't be like, I'm a girl's girl. I care about you, girly. But he was my first. Yes, exactly like that. Mm-hmm. It came out. No, no, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's not cool. It, it she kind of ruined it. <laughs> She's, her, yeah, her she ruined it because everyone was on her side thing. until then. Oh, exactly. Okay. Well, um, regardless, like, if he does cheat, it'll make for am- amazing music. I'm sure. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's all. PR. Uh, she goes back on tour in November. She'll be touring Australia, Japan, oh, Asia, so Europe. She'll be gone for months until like spring. So if so, find out in, in November. My husband actually, we were talking about Wait, it. Goes, when she goes back is... on tour, if they break up, then you know it was PR. And I was like, oh, good point. That's true. But also this November? Yeah, she goes what back on tour. She's month? been on a break. I think on August, her Tour took the oh. North American leg uh, ended yeah. um, in Mexico City, and now she's gonna go to in November Brazil, Argentina, and then you know the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. Lou so, and I were Lou and I were um were thinking that they were gonna break up after the Super Bowl, like you know next. Well, if she's going on tour, that might break. But if she's going on tour, they might that might you know mm-hmm. sooner. Yeah. Guys, I'll be and, back in thirty um, seconds. Continue. Okay, go for it. Um, but yeah, so if if it is. PR, um, which some people are saying because her movie's coming out next week. On her the, movie? Oh, yes. yeah, the concert for tour. movie. Yeah, for her right. tour, concert movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Is Beyonce doing one too? I keep seeing ads for it. I don't know. Is are you going to watch it? Real? Mm, I'm not even going to go to Taylor Swift one. <laughs> no, you're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? The concert. Come on. Why am I going to sit in a movie theater for that? Did you go to her concert? No, I did not. Um, but you, oh, you're a huge fan, but you don't, you don't. I do... love, look, I love her music, uh-huh. but, um, and I'll say I'm a Swifty, but I think Swifty, Swifty, I don't think they would consider me. I don't buy her merch. I don't, I don't really go to her concerts. I'm not going, I'm not going to go to her movie unless I get the chance to maybe I'll go, but yeah. I'm not going to be there opening night to yeah. go watch the, the concert movie because it's, it's a concert movie. Like, I don't know. That's that's such a fandom I, culture, though. Like, the, you have like to buy the merch. Yeah, so I think you're more of a real fan of just, like, I like her music. You stay up with the gossip, but you don't have to necessarily spend all your money and purchase everything. She's so rich. She doesn't need me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she but, was getting shit from that from the Screen Actors Guild for, oh, yeah. for, for going... Well, she's going to ruin the movie theater experience for a few weeks there, but yeah. I think it already broke the record of the pre-sales because her fans are, like I said, insane about... They're, like crazy about it speaking of the of the film um he was Lou so did... swaggy he's our, yeah. he's our he's our before and after that's <laughs> he's insane like a, they say he looks like a cop right he looks like yeah. his favorite sentence is stop resisting <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. he looks like he uh has a blue lives matter yeah bag. yeah definitely <laughs> yeah uh did you catch on monday night football that uh they announced like on the billboard on the on during the stadium game at MetLife uh, for the Giants game. Her tour came on, like mm-hmm. the, the a billboard came on on the screen on the screen, a commercial for her movie, and they Never. the Mets fan uh, the Giants fans were Giants booing. fans were booing yeah no they were boom when she came out on the on during the game Monday Night Football. This wasn't even the game that came on Sunday when Travis Kelsey was there. Right uh, last this night. Just, mm-hmm. No, it was last night. Uh, her movie poster came out on the big screen, and all the like, giant, well, you see Giants fans, but anybody in the in the con- in the concert, anybody in the crowd, in the was, game, yeah, going nuts, well, in the yeah. crowd was started booing uh, very mm-hmm. loudly. It was obvious that it was um about her. They're tired of her. And remember, we were talking about in the very beginning earlier that uh, it's we're getting tired of it, right? As football fans, um, yeah, these are two yeah. fandoms that don't clash. Is the reason. Yeah. So here's um, here's a couple of things that I wanted to play for you guys. This is uh, some of these some of these videos that have been coming out. Uh, yeah, I'll play I'll play these for you guys. Mm-hmm. You hear that? 
Did you, Did you hear, hear about how freaking Taylor Swift and Travis Kelly? Who? Travis Kelly? The football, the football player? player? Nobody, Nobody can. can. So freaking now, now they're dating? Him and Taylor Swift, Swift, she went for a game. And now, now everyone's, everyone's talking, talking about it. Like, like, he's, he's about to be a freaking millionaire or billionaire or whatever. You mean Kelsey? Travis Kelsey? That's the one they did Taylor Swift, right? Yeah, yeah, everyone's talking about it. Like, literally, no one knew who he was. And then, like, all these people were like, That was me, though, low key. That was you before. What do you mean with my name? Man, it has its own ratings. Super Bowl ratings. What are Super Bowls? Okay. Well, okay. No, Super Bowl championship. He is divorcing her right now. She's just scrolling it. Yeah, that's all until, like, a great commercial. She literally put Chuck Hulk in the mouth. Uh, no, no, she didn't. <laughs> put, put Travis, Travis Kelsey on the back? Nobody knew who he was. Like, like, like Travis. Trey, Trey, do you want to know that? What? No, this is not all right. He's triggered. He's triggered. No, no, no. First of all. Gronk is out. No one knew who he was if it wasn't him. Don't even do this. Don't even do this. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Are you talking about other Swifties? Like, 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 isn't it so great that, like, now he's probably going to get, like, really famous and a successful career? Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, nobody's ever heard of him until today. I have never, never in my life had I heard of him. Dude, Dude, literally, literally no, no one knew who he was until today. <laughs> until until they, they, she went, she went to his game. game. So, so I guess yesterday. Yeah. What? Oh, you just think she's going to help his career. I think he's going to end up being pretty successful. Uh, <laughs> Have you seen the, the men reversing it on women saying that he's making her famous and they're getting the Swifties are getting mad? Oh, the Swifties, no, no, so, no, so no. Yeah, I've seen a few TikToks of starting now. The men are like telling their yeah. wives and their girlfriends, yeah, like, hey, you know, this is pretty nice of Travis Kelsey dating this unknown. Now she's going to be more famous. <laughs> I feel like Listen, I, why one of the best tight ends in the history of the league downgraded is <laughs> it's, it's up to anybody up for debate, but she's got money, she's got clout. But Taylor and, well, like is said, so freaking powerful. Like, like yeah. she just has an army. Her fan it's, base is, like I said, they're they're back her up. She's so. yeah, she's scary. That's like not knowing who Beyonce is. Everybody knows. All right. Hey, what's up, Bonzo? I guess the the main reason Bonzo. is is because uh, just um, clout and and it's something to talk about. It's yeah. a big uh, it's a big and, topic this week, you know. And it's yeah, and we talk about cheese man, but it's basically just cheese I mean, like it, like it doesn't really matter, but I think it's also the odd coupling of it all. It yeah. is very odd. Uh, that's the first uh, sports guy she dates, other than singers or actors, you know. So mm-hmm. this was a, one of the stories that I had sent. Uh, Kyla Nicole, who she he dated, implies that it was a mistake dating a white man with blue eyes like Chiefs Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. The implication is that. Um, you know, she dated for five years. He was hoping that she was gonna, you know, after dating for five years, wow. five years, and then he just dumped her. And uh, like uh, basically saying the whole implication is that these white guys with blue eyes are just, you know, fetishizing black women, and then when it's time to settle down, then going back, you know, yeah, like I said. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess. Where do you fall that with bit. that one? Look, I just think from, like I said, from an aesthetic standpoint, from like if you were like taking the type of women that you date, it, it, it you couldn't go further opposites than dating like you know, like curvy you know women, and, and then all of a sudden you're with these very skinny, awkwardly dancing superstar. Yep. Yeah. 
like what the f- you like how do you, you how do you change like you know what i'm saying that's like all of a sudden i go from smoking weed to like you know and that's arms, I mean, like clove cigarettes like i don't know and as a swifty knowing her dating history too it's weird it's very because weird. she's been dating like this guitar playing john mayer you know to the one of the jonas brothers to right. jake Dylan hall and another actor and another actor and tom hiddleston mm-hmm. and then yeah. Suddenly, like a big buff football player, we're like, "Whoa!" It <laughs> like, like... Maybe you're trying to thing, or maybe, like I said, yeah. then people think it's all PR. It's a PR stunt. PR. I'm... I, I am like half and half. You know, it, it really does reek yeah. of, of 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 sort it of reeks PR, PR, right? But... I mean, it's weird. It's yeah, it's not even they like just... they're each other's types. Look, it spawns a billion articles. It spawns counter articles. It spawns. You know, like everybody's hey, talking about them. We're talking about them. We're talking the about artic- them. Yeah. You know, the article uh, that I saw was like um, that her power move is like sitting in the audience with the moms and like, you know, like that whole thing. It's like, you know, I think that in a couple, mm-hmm. like the NFL will get something out of it. She'll get mm-hmm. something out of it. Mm-hmm. And then in I a mean, couple of months, it's like, oh, they were never really serious. They went out a couple of times. She came yeah. to a couple of games to support him. They knew each other. They they went out to dinner a couple of times. Fun they dated. Shrugs. They, yep. they, there you go. You know, I can't dirty... even see them hooking up, honestly. Like, I just don't see the it. The ugly side is, like, a lot of the sports people that are pissed off are like, I need to see a sex tape, or I don't believe oh, it. Oh, I or... heard. I saw that clip. Yeah, oh, yeah. my gosh. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I said something about, well, she's going to be on our screens every, some, every football game, then might as well make a sex tape so we can watch that, too. I was like, Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A, little, a little too far there, but all right. <laughs> it's big, this it's is very big. like all American though. Like it's it feels like the cheerleader going with the football player and when was the last time something like white. this happened that you know big superstar dated a football player? I feel like it really feels like yeah, like you're right, like cheerleader with the football player. Yeah, it's like Giselle like and uh Giselle and Brady, maybe Brady. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think that was the last time it was Beckham, such a big. Beckham and oh, that's uh-huh. awesome. Sorry. <laughs> it was such big news. Yeah. Um. So. No, I agree. Go. And like I said, he's his shirts were or his jerseys are selling. Like the Swifties like are buying things. his jersey. They're buying to go to all the Chiefs games are literally uh, on high demand yeah. right now because especially the one at SoFi coming up um, against the Chargers is like but, uh, see? the price is crazy because they, they want to see if she's going to be there but it's like she's I don't think but, she'll be there at see, that's, game. That's what I mean by like this is even as big as he is and I know you guys are telling me he's like the biggest yeah. fucking big football deal. player ever and he's yeah. amazing huge deal. I It does feel like someone can be a huge deal within their career space and not go out of it. Whereas Taylor Swift is already a massive icon and kind of transcends. Like, I don't fucking like her and I know her. I know everything. I know too many things that I don't want to know, but I'm just surrounded by Swifties all the time. And she, you can't avoid it. Her her ticket sales are over a thousand dollars. Like she's making money. And right now I'm only seeing the prices of his shirt selling out i'm seeing the nfl benefit i'm not seeing a lot of why she would benefit aside from pr but even then does she need it because honestly the swifties literally look at a chicken nugget and they're like look what she's eating like she doesn't need the pr the so shorts she like, was wearing on sunday yeah, night are sold out now you know, on that website exactly See, that was with the little gems whatever like it's mm-hmm. anything she shows up and wears the swifties go online and buy it yeah literally the movie, an outfit he wore an outfit and um I forgot by what designer, but I 1989. Wore, the name of her album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they but they changed the name after he wore it and now it's sold out. So it's one of those things of like it just seems mm-hmm. like he's benefiting more, in my opinion. I don't know. That, so. that makes sense. Um well, and yeah, I mean, he's some people are saying her movie Sophie and I were talking about when you left Lou about the movie that's coming out in next week, uh, next weekend. And mm-hmm. um, but she doesn't need it's already sold out. Like if I try yeah. to like the she pre-sales doesn't need were the ticket crazy. sales. Like, what is he gonna bring to so, the table in that case? You know what I, I mean? don't know. That's what some people think. It's not PR. It feels, right. like, it feels uh, like it's Beyonce with like, I don't know, Pete Davidson or something. No, 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 I wouldn't say it. Go that far. He's better no. than that. But it feels like it's like a soccer player that does really well with Beyonce. I don't know. You know what I mean? Well, like, like remember when Baker dated the the, the 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 spice girl and then Beckham that was and Posh, deal. yeah. That was such a big deal. That is kind of literally what's happening because mm-hmm. Beckham wasn't the best, like I don't know, he wasn't oh, he was <laughs> Well, he was the best, but he I wasn't. He was, was, a, he he trans- was, a, he, he was, was he transcendent, transcendent I mean, past soccer. Yeah, they made a movie called Bend It Like Beckham. Was that before or after Posh? I don't know. 
No, I feel like never mind. That's not the same page because I guess Beckham is. Look, I mean, it's it's hard for non-football fans Mm -hmm. or people that are not in like the fantasy football world to understand how big of a deal Travis Kelsey is. Basically, there's 32 tight ends or 60 tight ends in the league, and he's number one, and he's been number one for the last five, six years. So that's what I mean. In his he's 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 really a big big deal. Yeah, in the football world. If you don't have him as a tight end. Yeah, you're, you're not scoring more than five points that week on yeah, your tight yeah. end slot. He, <laughs> like, like tight ends never go in the first mm-hmm. round of fantasy football drafts. He regularly he went in the t- first round of a fantasy football draft because he's so transcendent as his position. Mm-hmm. Um, he got hurt and he missed the first week, and it was a really big deal. He was a big reason that they've won two Super Bowls in the last you know four years. He's a big deal to in the football world. Anybody that watches football on Sundays knows who Travis knows Kelsey him, is. Yeah. But Absolutely. he's not like messy, where like you don't have to watch soccer to know who he is. You know, no, what yeah, I mean? I and like he, he's does, he, he himself doesn't sell out stadiums like Messi no, does. Yeah, but, Messi does. But, yeah, he, exactly. Messi but he's does. also very recently been getting tons. And the other thing is, he's got his brother that's on the Eagles because his brother's an offensive lineman on the Eagles. And then they started doing these Campbell Soup commercials with their mom. Mm-hmm. So oh they're God. they're getting that Campbell Soup money. Then he got Pfizer money. <laughs> he got that soup money. They got that soup money, and they're doing. A, he's doing a Pfizer commercial or a, about getting your flu shot and your COVID shot. Um, so he's getting pushed, like as like a big transcendent sports star, like to be big marketing dollars. And I think he will get there, especially. I mean, but I do feel like before Taylor, and I'm not trying to trigger nobody. I do feel mm. like he's the one benefiting in sales and in you know. Monetarily. Yeah, because now you now you know he, about him. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I didn't know who the fuck he was. I didn't yeah, yeah, care. Yeah. yeah. And Taylor, same thing, right? Like it's I I don't seek her, but she's just all around me all the time. So I, I do feel like there's a little imbalance there, but you know, like, they're both Trav- benefiting like, somehow. In terms of monetary, Travis Kelsey Killing is it. in the middle of a four year fifty seven million dollar contract with twenty two million dollars guaranteed. So he's 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 he was he, set up monetarily. He like He's comfortable, yeah, but, he's, but, how, he's but not, like Taylor Swift is like almost billionaire. You say, status, you know? like she's Sophia, crazy. fifty-seven yeah. million is comfortable to you, you bougie bitch. Fifty-seven million? <laughs> she's like I guess I'd settle for that. <laughs> You're like he's crazy. Fifty-seven million, and the only thing you can say I is I feel like she sells that out in one night. Like I don't know. I'm just kidding. They did <laughs> say that that on Sunday night saying, when like she, she showed up. That, yeah, I feel like she makes that like, you know, like they said that the weekend she was in Kansas City. That she made the money he makes the, a year. She, she probably makes like ten million a night. I don't fucking know. She's she's yeah. crazy. She's psycho. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, um, people that <laughs> Swifties are wild. It's not me. It's the Swifties. I'm sorry. I sent a picture to uh, my hand to show on on messages on Twitter uh, uh-huh. of the picture of um, Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and Sean Levy. He posted that picture on his Twitter of them that evening, uh, just to more like evidence um there you go sean levy the director of deadpool 3 um yeah posted that picture um oh my God. She, will she be in the movie i don't know like i said we'll find out in a couple of years when it finally finishes filming that is a really weird grouping if they're not doing some sort of business <laughs> right well yeah in my opinion yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's, and if he a... shows up as a cameo then there you go that was all that's true PR. wait sophie wasn't in that picture Hmm. Sophie Turner wasn't. Yeah, you're right. She's mm-hmm. dealing with her own drama right now. Yeah, that's true. But what a power move by her to hang out with Taylor Swift. That's what oh, yeah. you do when you when you and you know Taylor Swift dated her husband. Uh, long yeah, time. yeah, they dated. They dated. Oh, she, she, she wrote a few songs for him. Yeah, and uh, she's letting Sophie Turner use her apartment in New York. Yep. While she's because doing her custody battle. She's doing a custody power. battle because he she took is... the children's passport. She wants to take them to England where she's moving to. And he's like, no. So he took the passports and it's like, my kids are not going anywhere. So right now they're in the middle of a huge custody battle. It's getting really nasty. He's doing a lot of PR stuff. Taking, she would, They would never show their faces for a couple. Like, they're like two years old and under. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Nobody has seen those kids' faces, and suddenly he shows up with him and the na- with the kids and the nanny having breakfast out in public. Tons of paparazzi oh, pictures. That's that's a, he's like the good dad while she's filming in England. Uh, you know, uh, that's showing her. So, at that's a- so messed up, honestly. Yeah, they did this whole thing where uh, she was doing a cast a cast party after mm-hmm. filming. Um, they took pictures of her showing her drinking, 
dancing and they're like, Sophie Turner's over here in England partying. Well, look at him. Uh, the Jonas brother, I don't know which one. Yeah. <laughs> Out Jonas, here with his kids, yeah. with his kids. She's trying to win breakfast. the PR battle. Literally, literally, right when he was on tour too. Like, come on. Yeah, he's on tour. What? He's still on tour. He's still on tour. So that he's clearly not taking care of. Okay, whatever. Anyway, yeah, look. This is the last thing I'll say about this, which is, if you want to get really deep into it, what are they trying to distract us from? I'll tell oh. you what. Hey, you just mentioned that the COVID Pfizer Travis Kelsey uh thing. The right wingers mm -hmm. are saying that this is all just a push for for more a psyops. Oh, so she dates Kelsey. They see the commercial with him about getting your COVID. And all and the Swifties your will be like, booster. yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Hmm. it. Well, Taylor Swift uh, last week said something about, hey, sign up to vote. Voting's coming soon. And voting from between 18 and 25 year olds was shot up like 300% yeah. that that evening that she she's so powerful it's like insane so uh, a lot of right wingers are saying that uh the whole covid campaign that covid shots campaign that uh, travis kelsey is doing uh is all uh, you you know I, okay i can see that in the sense that like because taylor's army and her i feel like they're more on the liberal side if we're gonna have to like politicize it yeah i would say so. um and and it doesn't get more american you know yeehaw than nfl baby and dating the and football guy the football yeah. guy yeah so mm -hmm. I, I can see how maybe that benefits her into getting an in into a little bit more of a like uh, you know all american uh public eye i guess and then yeah then you they get you to vote her dancing and then you, you love it Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah She's like she's like the white auntie at the party. Well, you know her last like four boyfriends were British. I think maybe more than that. She One, dances two, like her a last British like person. five boyfriends are British. She likes the British men, and so it's so like I said as a Swiftie, I'm like, oh damn, she's dating a football player. That's that's new for me. Um, she even has a a lyric in her very first album uh, where she says uh, to herself, it's a song about herself being uh, uh, 15. That she says, in your life, you'll do things greater than dating the boy on the football team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of Swifties are like, well, well, well. <laughs> Not like in your 30s. You did a, like a... You know, <laughs> because when she was in high school, she she was like dating a football guy. And she wrote a heartbreak song about how he broke her heart. Yeah. So, Aww, see, now circle. she's back to dating a football player. But you're right. It's you, I've never thought about that. How all-American it is. It's so... Yeah, it's just picturesque. There. But like the Republicans are probably like half of them are happy about it, half of them are not. They don't know how to feel. They don't know how to feel. Because <laughs> it's like it's a white girl. About the, about the flu shots and stuff. They're yeah. chirping about that. That's weird. That's I'm uh, going through some stuff right now. I saw a Fox News segment. Uh, they were mad at her oh, no. for, for that for because he's they're calling him Pfizer boy. Like they're they're mad, you know. And she uh she was cheering for him at his uh at his at the game when he scored and she was she went let's fucking go but you can read her lips like she's like let's fucking go yeah. and they were like they were like oh in front of his mother how how dare she that's so rude that's that's not okay and we're like okay fox news <laughs> that's such okay. a prerogative right. okay <laughs> you know do you know the mom she whispered something and she was like ooh so I don't know what Carol said, but, but it was, so right it was, now Fox is just not happy with her. They're not. They're not happy with with this. So so, so it's a no for them. Okay, I thought it's a no for the right wingers. I think they're. they're I thought the right wingers would like that he's dating now, not black girls and white girls. You know. Yeah, but they're not happy about the his campaign with Pfizer. So would have been better with like Carrie Underwood or somebody. You know. Maybe like that. Right. No. Yeah, but anyway, um, that's the swift and... swifty news. Yep, I've got it that, all. That's <laughs> the swifty with the. Lizzie always on that Swifty beat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Checking in Hard on us. Hard-hitting stuff, man. Great Look, job. It happened. And, uh, well, I, you know, like I said, it's just going to be interesting to see how it plays out, obviously. Like yeah, I'm, um, I'm here for him. Subscribe. My prediction. All right, let's let's do predictions on okay. this one before we move on. Okay. All right, I'll go first. My prediction, like I said, is uh, right when she's about to go on tour... Back or something mid-november no, right maybe when she's in australia so she doesn't have to answer any questions <laughs> they'll be like hey you know a note from a publicist that they've quietly broken up you know or they they weren't really ever very serious she was just being supportive mm -hmm. and she loved his mom and stuff like that and she's not gonna write no songs about it but mm -hmm. definitely go vote and get your pfizer vaccine 
Uh, so I think that November, December, it'll fizzle out. And because I think that as good as much as the, the NFL will enjoy a little bit of a bump into getting more women watching, getting some 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 younger eyeballs on the game. Um eventually I think the the core fan is gonna reject this very much. They are and they're gonna get mm-hmm. bombarded. If every time Kansas City plays, she goes to the game. NFL fans are going to get, are going to write. Eventually, they will start booing her when they show her on the Jumbotron. Eventually, they're going to get mad because every time the commentators go to commercial, they have to fucking cram a Taylor Swift lyric into it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know what I mean? Like, like all this stuff is going to come back and bite them in the ass, I think. Uh, They'll go for the short-term games, but I think in the end, it'll just fizzle out before the end of the year. I think it might last a little longer but hear me out hear me out Mm -hmm. i think that they're gonna try to do long distance right while she's away and he's busy playing but i think that they're gonna be some like tmz pictures of him at a club with girls and then it's gonna be like but how does taylor feel about it and who knows maybe taylor's like in japan and then is i don't know meets up with an ex i don't know it's gonna get like dirty it's gonna be nasty i don't know maybe she doesn't i don't know he's gonna do something they're gonna see him coming out of like nobu with a girl or like i don't know so you know something's gonna happen um and so they're gonna use that turn it out for like a month or two i say they break up next year publicly okay. like the, like the statement doesn't come out until maybe january okay. i don't know when does the season end officially season, february? Two, february yeah super bowl's in the mm. february 5th probably so if after the super bowl he like jets off to meet her in like uzbekistan or something then i'll be interested <laughs> yeah i'm thinking he might visit her once she might come oh she might come back and forgive him for oh my god so he cheats so I say less than three months. I like your, Sophia, I like your you say story right now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he, he cheats. Um, then TMZ goes crazy. She forgives With him. Goes to another girl. game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big booty black. Definitely, you know, it's gonna happen. And then, and then they break up eventually. Okay. And then she writes songs. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know the timeline exactly, but it's gonna. Lazy. I think I say a few more months. Well, after. I'm gonna stick to my Deadpool three theory. Ooh, when, that's a good one. You know, this is all have just been meetings with them, that maybe dates, but mostly they weren't really dating. They weren't really romantic. No, they were all just getting together to right. discuss the future projects. Is right now really, uh, you know, with the with the SAG strike, nothing can really happen right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. So maybe they met up for a few, you know, after the concert. I believe that maybe he did give her the bracelet with his number, and they've been chatting. And she's then she's, you know, it's all. Get, we're coming together with the Deadpool 3. She was going to do a cameo or be in the movie. I don't know. Um, he might do a cameo. Uh, the Super Bowl commercial theory, I think, um, is still there that they're both going to be in a Super Bowl mm-hmm. commercial. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. That's why it's all getting hyped up right now. So how exciting would it be for Super Bowl for, to, for there to be a commercial with both of them? Yeah. Uh, whoever buys... I don't know what company, right? But... Hey. Um, but... That's my theory that it's all big PR and maybe they are hooking up because you know they're two young people, why. they're the same age, and they're in you know in a lot of same rooms and they got together. Uh, but I don't think it's serious. And a lot of Swifties believe that this is gonna be her end game, her this is a song that's called end game, her future husband, and she's gonna settle down and have an all American family. She's gonna be the wife of the NFL star, and I don't see that i don't see that either i don't know if it's gonna be cheating and drama like sofia says that would be crazy uh he's gonna cheat i don't i don't see a world where they have sex they're not sexually compatible let's be honest i said she's she's a a six foot fucking four tight football i think they'll make it as long you know i think the pr is gonna go as long as even after the super bowl i think they'll break up uh maybe by spring of next year there'll be a whole hey they didn't survive her the tour and the his tour. their schedules conflicted. Yes, and exactly. Say, schedule conflicting, yeah. but I, don't, I think they're gonna try they to remain s- close ride friends. the wave. Exactly, they're mm-hmm. gonna ride the wave until a spring, until her concerts are done. Um, and, and she'll song. she'll sing a few songs in the concert that she might shed a tear. They're gonna be like, "Oh, what's happening with her?" What's happening? What's and then happening? they're gonna be like, "Oh, no wonder she was going through it." You know, and 
<laughs> we're all, me and Sophia coming up with like this, there you go. this yep. movie in our heads. But right. That's exactly what's going to happen, though. We're going to check back to this episode. But I like, agree that if, it if anything, I don't think they could drag it into Deadpool 3. Yeah, but, I, I mean, the so. Twilight, no. the Twilight yeah. people did it, and I still believe that's a PR relationship. Uh, listen, listen, listen. And, uh, yes, and Chris Stewart. So they did it for like they did it. Yeah, movies. yeah. That was that was commitment. That was commitment, and I think they can do it because they're so far apart that hey, I mean, Sungus is in the media. I think that's part. exactly how the breakup is going to go, though. Even if there was cheating, I think they are going to be like, oh, their schedules, but they're friends and blah blah blah. Yeah. And check out Deadpool three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lizzie with, Deadpool, Lizzie with a Deadpool I'm gonna, 3 uh, I'm, I'm gonna, advertising. I'm, I'm going to get it when it comes out and none of them are in the movie. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for a segment called Lou, right. plays with, Lou Plays with Fire. Hey, Swifties. She's oh the definition God. of mid, and she's a grown-ass 30-something-year-old woman. Stop treating her like a teenager. Yeah. Yep, yep. Sorry. How do you feel about that, Lizzie? She's 33 X. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, Listen, I just I don't find her attractive at the least. I understand she's the talented singer. And my husband is the like, same I mean, thing. He he's not. I, I just I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I. I, I it makes no sense. Yeah. He he's downgraded in every possible capacity. Except in the money and clout. Fate, no, in money fate, and yeah. clout. Yeah, he, money and clout. Yeah. And he's already has fifty million in the bank, which by Sophia standards is just comfortable. Not <laughs> filthy <laughs> fucking rich. Um, <laughs> and he's got endorsement money, and he still has several years of that where he's going to be at the top of his profession. Um, so I don't understand it unless it's literally just to catapult him to another level of like Beckham, Messi, Tom Brady, Maybe. and and that would and that would just be like. <laughs> Like a PR thing mm -hmm. at the highest levels, or a distraction, or just something to distract us from our mundane lives. I mean, we spent an hour talking about this today, so obviously, yeah, we're getting working. something out of it. All okay. right. Anyway, this has been Swifty Talk. Thanks All for right, having me again. Thanks for coming. Thanks for. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go but um, I'll stay. I was laughing at at the beginning when I, I know what you're <laughs> right. at now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> immediately added to the beginning. All right. All All right thank guys. you for stopping Thanks, by, Lizzie. Lizzie we love thank you. Thank you for having me. Have Bye. a good night, everybody. You Bye. too. Bye. Oh, that is so beautiful. It's Halloween time. Fuck yeah. So after wow, that, posted, that guy did such a good job imitating yeah, it. Job. So after they post, she posted this video, people actually were calling the cops and sending them to her house. Oh, because they think she's like a danger to herself. They think she's a danger to herself. I mean, it's Halloween. I mean, you know? yeah, it's Halloween. not gonna lie, I was a little scared when I watched it. I was like, "What?" Yeah, what's up with this girl? Yeah, what the but, fuck? Um, you know. All right. Um. Anyway, that was kind of our main topic, and we had an interview in between. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just checking, and we Tell do have him. one on Namas way. Um, so let's quickly sort of get our personals and our news out of the scene. You know, hey, Sophia, how you doing today? What's up? How's hey. it going? How's hey, it going? You, yeah, hey, it's going, going well, hey, Thank it's going you. Well. It's going well. Right, right, you can't go back. Yeah. Um, so how was Florida? Oh, my God. Thank you for asking. I'm a lot browner. Look at my skin. Yeah, I'm glowing. You, I've seen you. I've seen you. I said you had the hot dogs out at the, on the beach for a while. Yeah, there. I had the hot dogs out. It's great. It's great. Yeah, no, it was yeah. fun. I went to Tampa for a few days, and then I went to Miami for a few Ooh, days. Nice. It was really cool. Um, Tampa went with some friends, and then... Me and those friends also went to Miami, but Miami was mainly to visit my cousin. So that was awesome. So I got to visit him, see how he lives. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice. It was very like, like sweet family time. And like he showed us around and he was awesome. And it was really nice spending quality time together. And you confirm he's playing for the, for Messi's team in Miami, right? No, 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 no. He's playing for Miami FC. The other one okay, is so Inter, Inter Miami or something? Inter Miami. Okay. So he's on a different, uh, on the other Miami team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, anyway, yeah. so you so, had fun. You got to cheat, recharge the battery a little bit. I did. Thankfully, I was a little worried that I was going to go ham, kind of like in Europe where I came back so fucking drained. Um, but no, honestly, Tampa specifically, it was like we had, we had, our place was like right 
uh, by the beach. And so we were right. just beaching all day, chilling. Miami was awesome. Um, got to see a lot of culture. So I don't know. It was really, it was, it was a cool experience. Cause like, again, going from Tampa, we're like, we were around the white folk um, and it was chill, but it was very bougie and it was nice. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Ronnie Meatball, Ronnie the Saint has Ronnie the Sanctimonious or this the Sanctimonious. This san oh, I love him. I I wish I wish I would have seen some Gators, um, and some MAGA Republicans, but I did not. It was very all very liberal and hedonistic and amazing, which is not the picture that I had about Florida. So I yeah. guess South of Florida is where you want to go, guys. It's really fun. The heat is disgusting. But um, good for a vacation. Yeah, yeah it's it's yeah, bad. It's bad. But um, yeah, no, it was fun. I had some Cuban sandwiches. Um, yeah, it was great. A lot of a lot of big booty Latinas over there. So oh my god, I was I was a happy girl. It was a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice area. Did you have some some cortaditos, some Cuban coffee, stuff like that? No, I tried, but honestly, just the timing, the weather. Like I wanted coffee, but literally when I got there, I was like, I no, I don't mm. want nothing that's hot right now oh yeah, yeah yeah i was just like it was it was hot it was fucking hot yeah i should have no, it's all right it's all right uh but yeah what did i miss what has been happening in your life in the last week no uh, fia. no fia no fia week has been listen i've been exhausted but um but for good reason i've been uh like i said everybody knows i've been telling people we we're opening up a tattoo shop here in San Diego with soft mm -hmm. open this month. Yeah. Um, if anybody that is in Southern California wants to come get tattooed, just tell them that Lou from Me the Show sent you. Oh, I have a question. And uh, we'll get you. Go ahead. What's your question? Uh, Friday the 13th is coming up, sir. Are you doing uh, a Friday the 13th thing at your shop? Yes, we will be doing Friday the 13th. We'll be Shut doing, up. Yeah. But the days really? of, I mean, for everybody, the days of $13 tattoos are, are, are like, God, so what? but we are what still being. What are we charging? What are we, what are we talking about here? Oh well, uh, the shop minimum I think is like eighty to one hundred bucks. So we're gonna do fifty bucks for flash art. So, which is like oh. really a good deal for these days. There's no more. There's no more thirteen dollar tattoos, unfortunately. Well, I was gonna go see if I can find a twenty dollar one. You know, uh, I mean, you know me, so we'll we'll we can definitely hook you up. Okay. But, you know, in the general, most shops are doing like 33 or 35 or $40. We'll be doing something like that. We'll probably have some mini flash that we can do for super cheap. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely, I mean, you know, you know me, so, you know, you know, one of the owners, so you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll definitely hook you up. Uh, plus we want to do some promos and stuff there. So uh, I've already, I'm already, I'm not only an owner, but I'm the shop's best customer. Cause I've gotten two tattoos so far. Oh my God. Man. I got, uh, what was it? I got, uh, this, uh, the snake man. Very that, nice. That, that one of the apprentice did is actually a really good apprentice. He's, he's doing a good job. And then today my brother convinced me to start working on the back of my arm. No, no. So, so painful. That area sucks. So we're doing a blue Oni, uh, Japanese blue demon Did to you go cry? with my Japanese screen. Oh, my God. There's some parts where I was, because I had to straddle this chair, and I just had my head oh my down, God. and I was just like, oh, yeah, there were some parts where. It's going to be fun when he has to shade it and color it in in a few weeks. Yeah, that's going to suck. Can I watch? But basically, yeah, absolutely. Um, but basically, that's what I've been doing. Um, so anybody that's a fan of the show, and if you're in Sorry. Southern California. If anybody that's a fan of the show and in Southern California, make sure that you are following my tattoo shop, which is, and there'll be a sponsor along with Sofia's restaurant, La Original Casa del Taco, uh, of our San Diego Minute segments going forward. Um, and uh, we will be doing Friday the 13th promotions very soon on Friday the 13th. And also, um, if you follow the social medias for myself and the tattoo shop at SoCal Tattoo Main Street, all one word, at SoCal Tattoo Main Street on Instagram or Facebook, you will be entered into a raffle for our official opening day for three $300 tattoos we're going to be giving away. And all you have to do is like the Instagram page, like the Facebook page, share the page, and follow all the artists for additional entries. But basically... We're going to be giving away a bunch of tattoos moving forward for the show. 
So that's kind of what's been up with me. Hold on. I got to go real quick. I got to take a 30. I'll be right back. You got to take a 30? All right. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to take a 30. Take Tell it, more so about your personal news. Anything. Open up. All right. Got it. Hey, listen, man. I'm here. I'm here. I'm private chatting. I'm private chatting. Oh, Sophia's got a family thing happening. All right. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, we still have four dogs at the house. Um, the two, the two, my two old school dogs, Baxter and Shy Girl, are getting old. They are getting really old. So I love them and I'm taking care of them in their old age. We have Baxter and Shy Girl. And then I have two other dogs, younger dogs. The German Shepherd, also, a.k.a. Ozymandias, a.k.a. Osito Panda, uh, a.k.a. Oso Peludo, um, who's my German Shepherd. He's about two and a half years old. And I got tricked into having a fourth dog, a Belgian Malinois, um, which are nicknamed Maligators for good fucking reason. Do not get a Belgian Malinois unless you got a ton of, sp a lot, a ton of time, um, a big ass yard with a high ass fence um and are gonna have patience and don't mind that several things that they find on the floor will be eaten up and destroyed he's already eaten and destroyed four pairs of shoes and sandals uh and several other random things that he's found around the couch around the house uh today they found a box of bags and destroyed it uh as well as other things they found uh they found an all softball glove that I had and they destroyed that. And basically I've had to just sort of rearrange my entire house so that I keep stuff away um, so that they don't destroy it while I'm away. How uh, did, were you talking about your dogs? Yeah, I was just talking about the dogs. And... Oh, that's yeah. such a, that's such an easy, easy riff right there. Cause uh, yeah, these bitches just... are driving me crazy, huh, honey? Oh my God. You know. She just made my niece cry. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's because when they were barking, it's because someone came in. I thought it was my brother or somebody. And I was like, just let them out, let them out. But it was my little my sister with my little baby niece. And she was Ooh, like, oh, why is awesome. the dog barking? That was cute. Anyway. Mm. But I'm back. That's personal news. That's what's happening. Make sure you guys are checking out if you're in Southern California, La Original Casa del Taco for Sofia yeah. for her family's best food and at SoCal Tattoo Main Street, 3660 Main Street for all your tattoo needs. We're gonna get it done. We're gonna get we're gonna get Sophia tatted up here pretty I soon. I have to, yeah, I gotta film this with stickers. That's why Yeah, I pick something. Yeah, My brother's back on the 17th, but we have really talented artists there at the show. All right. I think, uh, I think you want him to do my cookie tattoo. So I'll think about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it. All right, let's play a quick game of F Mary Kill BFF. Okay. All right. You're going to have to F1, marry one, kill one, and one of them has to become your BFF. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. We got Selena oh. Gomez, worth oh. 80 million. Ariana Grande, worth 240 million. Miley Cyrus, 160 million. Or Demi Lovato, 40 million. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm marrying Miley. You're marrying Miley. I'm obsessed with her. Yes. I love her. Mm. And I think okay. we would be very compatible. Okay. Uh, I, I currently hate Ariana, so I'm killing her. Killing Ariana Grande. Yeah. Also, like, no sexual attraction there. She's mm. tiny, petite, no curves. Come on. Mm -hmm. um, what's left? Fucking and BFF? Yeah. I'll probably be BFF with Selena, and I'm fucking Demi, because she's probably better in bed. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mary Miley, fucking Demi, BFF with Selena, killing Ari. Kill. Ari, you don't get to cause a divorce and stay good with me, girl. Uh-uh. Listen, listen. Not a girl's girl. Listen, I'm marrying Selena. As I expected you to, but you know. Yeah, I mean, just the 800 million up top, that's good enough for me. But I'll show she's she's hot as hell. Uh, so, and I'll probably F Miley for the one time, just to kind of see nice. how that goes. Yeah, that goes. And then I'm probably killing Ariana and BFFing with Demi. We are you know? all killing Ari. Ah! Yeah, really are. yeah, sorry. I don't know why this picture of these four chicks kind of was like, hey, that's an interesting quadruple. Uh, yeah, we know somebody you won't be dating, Sophia, mm. because you've aged out, is Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, uh, I'm way too old for that guy. Yeah, he's 48. And look, he's. Surprise, surprise. 
he's dating a 25 year old uh model named victoria soretti oh but they say God. this time this time it's much more than a passing fling okay sure also that's old for him <laughs> She's 25, and he, apparently he likes her. Mm. I mean, okay. I just, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't get know. his taste in women, but okay. I don't get, I, don't get, I mean, I guess technically she's a model, but I don't. What the hell? That that face is a little. She's I don't a know. pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. Yeah, He's an old man know. now. Um, Do you think he'll ever get married and settle down with? I wouldn't go. With, I wouldn't say pretty. I would just say she's got like a very fierce model face, but I don't really think that's pretty. I mean, you know, good looking, whatever. Yeah. Objectively she's got an aesthetically attractive face, I guess. Yes. yes. But this time it's more than just a passing fling. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just love how these, like, how they post it, like, oh, it's a fact. Like this time it's serious. I'm like, who did you talk to? Who, you, who, do, you, <laughs> who do you know? Who's making these decisions? <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, we've done uh, our Swifty talk. We've done our interview for the day. Mm -hmm. And we've done our personal news and our Florida reviews, which means there's just one more thing we have to do before we leave. Now it's time for No Namas Way. No Namas Way. No Namas. <laughs> I love it. Every time. <laughs> oh, but before we do No Namas Way, can I, can I have a minute here? Can I have one minute of your time, Sophia? One we'll talk minute? About how, sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that it? Do you do you know that we that we can travel into the past? Uh, I did not know that. No, yes. how far into the past? We can travel billions of years into the past, Sophia. Okay. Because every night you look up at the stars and you see that light. That light has been traveling for sometimes forty to fifty billion years across a vast infinite universe. Mm -hmm. So just when you think you thought that we couldn't travel into the past, you were wrong. Because every time we look up at the night sky, when you don't get, when you get away from the city and all that light pollution, which fucking I really need to do like soon. Yeah. Like I really need to go like do some mushrooms and look up at the stars for a little while. Cause like, I think I need it for my soul. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I want to ask you about your micro dosing later to see how that's going. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> what? But in the meantime, what, what, what? But in what? the meantime, it is incredibly amazing to me that we can actually travel back in time because every single piece of light that you see in the night sky has actually been traveling towards Earth for us for billions and billions of years. And that's how we know where we all came from. And we're all made of the same exact particles of stardust from one single tiny little ball that expanded infinitely hundreds of billions of years ago. So, again, let's not take ourselves too seriously. Life is fleeting. We're stuck yes. to this rock by magic. Well, and somehow... Die. Over 500 years, we've made so many strides in technology. Imagine what we'll be in a billion years from now. And that's been my Lugo's Deep Minute for today. <laughs> uh, minute 27. Got it. Cool. Close enough. Oh. We tried. We tried. All <laughs> right. Oh, that was pretty let's good. Do, pretty good. Let's do No Nama's Way. All, All right. right. Our question How many today. Do we have? Just one here that I just oh. saw when I checked. Okay. Uh, the, our question comes from somebody who's called I Hate It Here. Uh, I did, I did girl, too. girl, say, um, mm -hmm. here is the question. There has been some drama in my friend group lately. Mm -hmm. We love drama. Okay. We love friend group drama. It's very nice. Um, we love it here. Uh -huh. We love it here. We love it here. Let's call them. It involves two friends of mine. Let's call them Sammy and Jay. Wow. Okay. Nice. nice. Grace. I'm closer to Jay. Wow. Than Sam. But my question is less about the drama about giving ultimatums with friendships. Okay, got it. JWoww basically said that she doesn't want to associate with anyone that would be want to be friends with Sammy. Mind you, the drama was admittedly Sammy's fault, but also it's really dumb and pointless. And while I understand that it can be hurtful to be friends with Sammy, I sort of feel angry or at JWoww for putting in the position to choose and that she's willing to end our friendship just because I chose to maintain an already established friendship with Sammy. The whole drama thing is pretty... No one did anything crazy, but Jay was really hurt. And while I love her, I do hate being. Wait, it's pretty what? Out. The whole drama is pretty what? The whole drama is petty. Sorry. Uh. No one did anything crazy, but Jay Wow is really hurt. And while I love her, I do hate being given an ultimatum. I don't want mm. to lose any friendships here, but I'm stuck in the middle. What should I do? Also, what are your thoughts on friendship ultimatums as a whole? Okay. So, Sammy and Jay Wow and the third girl. Okay. Third girl is I hate it here. Is the yeah, I hate it here. Um, 
So JY was the one giving an ultimatum of like, I don't want to hang out with anyone that would dare associate with Sammy. Because of this little drama. that Because of the drama, happening. which is not related to the third girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn. Okay. Well, and then she said Sammy was the one that did the bad thing. So she understands. But also JY was the one saying. JY like basically you, said. I would like you to not be friends with her. Yeah, JC basically says she doesn't want to associate with anyone that would want to be friends with Sammy. The drama was admittedly Sammy's fault, but also dumb and pointless. And she's mm. willing to end our friendship because I choose to maintain a friendship with Sammy. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, I don't like, I don't know. I think, I think I don't like friendship ultimatums. Um, I think if you do something truly heinous, uh, of course, like I'm going to side with the person, you know, who, who was in the right, but if it's something like petty in between them and I I've had good rapport with both, yes. I can, I can totally understand why you would be mad at your friend for essentially being like, I think you should not be friends with her because of what she did to me. Like, I think that's just a, we, a very immature way to put it also like, like, I don't know. It, it just it just seems very immature to give somebody an ultimatum based on friendship. And I think that it's inconsiderate of Jay Wow. So mm. I think I think I'm it's you know, I don't think you're siding with someone just by maintaining a friendship. Like I had I had a friend break up pretty recently, actually, and we still have mutual friends in common. And like n that was my shit. I was like, never did I think like you need to stop talking to them. Like, no, mm -hmm. it was kind of like you there there was nothing between y'all so I'll keep you know hang mm -hmm. out with them whatever um and i would never do that and my friend did bring it up kind of like kind of like well you know like i would not like to stop being friends with them and i was like that's fine like i don't mm. you know like i just don't see why they have to be mutually exclusive um obviously i understand like the discomfort of it but like that's when we all are grown-ups about it like you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be throwing ultimatum around. I guess my point is, I do not, I do not agree with the ultimatum. Yeah, I've been on both sides of this, and I've been, you know, I've been on examples where, um, you become friends with somebody that a friend of yours is dating, and they break up, and then they're like, "I want right. you not to be friends with them," and I'm just like, "Fuck off!" Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I've established a friendship them with them. Yeah. I have a friendship with them above what your relationship is, you know? And in those mm -hmm. cases, it was just more like jealousy or like, oh, don't try to fuck my ex-girlfriend, you know, like something like yeah. that, you know? Uh, and so <clears throat> I don't agree with that. I've always been somebody that tries not to burn bridges, but then sometimes you do, you know, sometimes you have to. Yeah, On the other right. hand, <clears throat> locally, there is a person that is mutuals with a lot of the people that i know in the film industry here locally that i had some issues with in the past where they said some things about me or we had some issues and i just said i'm not going to ever associate with that person again i'll be cordial if i have to be in the same place i don't really have a problem but don't expect me to be happy or to be sort of mixing or working with them on any projects or anything like that. Now, if I started to hang around them, would you tell me, Hey, Sophia, I don't want you to hang out with them. Um, not unless you ask me and you're like, Hey, what do you think of this person? And if you ask me what I think of this person, I'll say, listen, this is my personal experience with them, but you are mm -hmm. a grown woman. You can do you're whatever welcome you like. To. Yeah. yeah. So you, you wouldn't be like, that. stop it. Like I, it makes no, no, me no, uncomfy. No. Yeah. No, if I felt that, they were a danger or if they were something like that. And I've reached out to girls that I know that are right. interacting with friends. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. And I'd be like, Hey, listen, just so you know, this guy, you know, like I've, I've always looked out for my homies like that, but I wouldn't be like, it's just somebody that I had a personal beef and misunderstanding, not misunderstanding, but a personal gripe and beef with. And I had, and it was me and some other people that both this person was sort of attacking. Yeah. They were in their project. They were attacking my relationship. They were trying to do a lot of shit. They were talking a lot of shit. And my other friend was like, yeah, you know, he's cool. We're good. We're good. And I'm like, okay, that's your decision. But me, I'm going to go ahead and maintain the beef, you know? Right, right, I'm gonna, right. I'm going to keep this pettiness. So yeah. I've been on both sides. Uh, but I've never made an ultimatum to another friend that says, hey, if you still hang out with this person, then, then you know, that's, I think that's, that's unwise. That's short-sighted. That's petty.
mm-hmm. and I believe, and so I'm against friend ultimatums. You know, yeah. everybody has, you know, yes, there's friend circles, but within those friend circles, there's, there's individu- individual, individual relationships, yeah, individual, individual threads and mm-hmm. levels. There's levels to this shit. Um, mm-hmm. So I definitely agree that um, I definitely don't agree with your friend telling you, you know, choose or and especially if it was like, listen, there could be some situations where like uh somebody did something serious or illegal or something like this, or was putting somebody in danger where you might have to say, Hey, are you, are you okay with that? Because if you're okay with it, I'm not okay with, I'm not okay with you. But if what you're saying is it's just a petty friendship dispute or somebody is something did and it's, you know, is it going to matter a year from now? Is it going to matter three months from now? Is it going to matter two minutes from now? If it doesn't, then I think they're overreacting. Yeah. And you just let them know that. And then you say, listen, I, 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 I want to keep you as a friend, but you have no right to tell me who I get to be friends with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which to be fair, um, even though she is calling the situation petty and I believe it is, I'm sure, but you, it, uh, hey, Robles. Hey, Cyril. Thanks for stopping at the, at the end of the show. What's up? Um, I, 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 I was going to say like, I believe, I believe that it is petty. I'm sure. But for Jay, wow, what if it's like actually really like serious? Like you said, like it's like it, it calls um, Sammy's character into question, and therefore anybody mm-hmm. who associates with her is like a terrible person. So in that case, you kind of just have to put up with the fact that you think it's petty, you um, feel fine maintaining. Ah! Sorry, is it very loud? Okay, cool. Well, whatever. I was just going to say you feel fine maintaining that friendship, in which case you have to just stand by that because that's how you feel. But you also have to allow Wow to feel how she's going to feel, which means that a friendship breakup might be in play and it sucks to be in the middle. But, you know, that's what's that's what you're signing with. The ultimatum is happening. So, honey. Hey. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself. Hold on. I completely understand. So uh I hate it here. Good luck with that. If you let us know how it turns out. But, you know, are you gonna stand your ground or are you going to um are you going to change your mind? Are you gonna try to see it their way and 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 maybe decide that your one friendship is more important than is your friendship with the first person more important than your is your is your friendship with jwow more important than your friendship with sammy are they about the same you know there's levels to this so you, you gotta you know you gotta is the juice worth the squeeze is giving up on the one person worth keeping a relationship with the the first person going or yeah, or which one do you value more hey, which one do you value more because it might be you might be in a situation where you where you where you were for a time being you don't get to keep both you know so just you're gonna have to just weigh that out. But in general, uh, the first step I would say is letting them know that you feel that them giving you an ultimatum based on the circumstances is petty, childish, and you want them to reconsider what's happening and then take it from there. All right. Agreed. Agreed. Well to, agree, Honey well agrees. Yeah. Hey, I'm streaming. I'll be done in five minutes. I'll have to call you back. Talking to your dogs too. No, I'm calling uh, my brother. Call me. Um. Anyway. Sorry about that. Let us know how it goes. Let us know how it goes. Yes. Cyro, thanks for stopping by. Hope your vision is better. We miss Yay. you, friend. Hopefully, we can see you soon. Uh, thank you for everybody that stopped by today. Thank you to the team from Nuclear Power. Oh my gosh! Uh, an yes. incredible, you know, and shit. I mean, they write for Lopez versus Lopez. They wrote for Thirteen Reasons Why. That is a powerful writing team right there. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to seeing more of their work and going back and seeing some of the stuff they've written because I think it's super interesting that they're in the comic book world. I learned a lot, especially because I have some ideas that I want to convert to a comic book. So it was very informative for me. Sophia's got two dogs. I got four yeah, dogs. I got to go, My, sir. My, Milo's been Dan's super quiet. Over there. Milo's been super quiet because today I brought them chicken nuggets and I had them here and I went to the kitchen to get myself something to drink. And when mm-hmm. I came back, that little motherfucker had jumped on my desk and eaten all the fucking nuggets. Oh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, we love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. We love you. Love you Catch guys. you guys better next time. We'll do better. All the good stuff. Blah, 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 blah. We love you. Bye. <laughs>
Vamos, papá, hay que irnos. Me estoy aguantando desde que pusieron el domo. ¿Puedes esperar? Muchas personas trabajaron en esta película y solo quieren que se aprenda sus nombres de memoria. Y yo quiero asegurarme de que ningún animal resultó lesionado durante la filmación de esta película. ¡Piu! ¡Listo! ¡Uy, palomitas en el suelo! ¡Chao! ¡Espera, espera, parece que Maggie tiene algo que decir! ¡Es la primera palabra!